let's take a look at Spring Boot with Spring Retry and see how quickly we can create a retry mechanism around REST template. All right, so to start with, I have a, a demo endpoint application. This demo endpoint application is listening on port 8081. And it's just a simple slash API slash V1 slash item and returns name and item. So let's go ahead and start that. I'm going to open up a terminal. But we can run this on a terminal simply using curl. And we can see we get back name and item. Okay, so this is our simple service. We're going to use this. We're going to wrap another application calling this service. So I'm going to open up IntelliJ and let's go through and create that new service. Okay, we have a simple application that we've created and we have some notes to follow. There's two things that we need to do in here, two libraries we need to add. They can be added through Gradle or through Maven. With Maven, we need to add the Spring Retry and also Spring Aspects. So in our POM file, so let's go down. So we can see that we've added our spring retry and our spring aspects. Okay, so we've done that. I'll go through, I'll make sure I reload the Maven project. Now that we've done that, we can go into our application. In our application, we need to make sure we have enable retry annotation. And I've also added a bean in here since it was convenient for REST template. Now that we have that, we can go through and I created the controller. We have a controller, retry me REST controller. And I've just created a REST controller with a request mapping slash API slash V1. And I have a get endpoint of slash retry me. So the path for that will be slash API slash V1 slash retry me. And it's going to go through and call the, the other service that we just showed. So our other service is still up and running. And this that service is listening on port 8081. This service is listening on port 8080. All right, so let's start this service. We'll enable Lombok. Again, it's listing on port 8080, and we can go back here to our previous curl where we're calling on port 8081. We're going to make this call API slash V1 slash retry me. So this will be port 8080, API slash V1 slash retry me. And this connects up and passes through to the other service. If I go through and we stop that other service now, we make this call. We can see that we get back an error. Okay, it's exactly what we expected. Now, we want to have a retry mechanism. So I'm going to go ahead and restart this application again. And in here, I can do a couple different things. The first thing I can do fairly simply is I can add some annotations to enable retries. So let's do that. And I'll add an annotation around here, a simple retriable max attempts four. And I'll have a back off strategy where it waits two seconds with a multiplier of two. So let's see how this works. I want to track how many times I'm retrying. So I'll put a, a private variable in here for attempts. And then I'll go ahead and actually call that mechanism and print out the value of the attempts. All right, let's stop this and let's restart it. And again, the our 
outside consumer service that we're going to call is up and running right now. And this one's up and running. So let's call the service again. And immediately comes back. And I can see that with my retry, it is retry attempt one. So now that we have that, let's go through and stop the outside service again. We'll leave this system right here running. Let's actually go ahead and stop it and start it since the retry count gets set on application startup. So now we'll run this again. We see that a call attempt is one, call attempt two. The third call attempt is taking longer and the fourth is taking even longer because we have that back off strategy. And eventually we get a connection refused and it times out. And we came back with a 500 error. Now let's run this again. Let's start this. Let's make the call. We can see we have two attempts, but let's go start our service before it times out. And now we successfully got the data. So we showed you how to go through and set this up and it'll get an error if there's no data. Not having data isn't very graceful. We can actually add another annotation called recover. So let's add some code in here with an, the recover annotation. And what this will do is return something rather than just a 500 error. So let's stop this and let's restart this. We still have this service up and running. So I will take this service down again. We will call this. We can see our first and second attempt has failed. Third attempt has now failed. And when we get our fourth attempt that has failed, we'll get back a message that says service is down. And in here, we actually returned an, an internal error response for that. Okay, so that's a little bit about how Spring Boot Retry works. It's much simpler to configure than Resilience 4J. You can set it up for the API endpoint, or you can pass these properties from the resource application property files. Hope this helped you. Please continue watching my videos. Thank you very much.